focus weight loss products. Well, Australia's most powerful union could be created early next year if members approve merger plans between the CFMEU and the Maritime Union. The plan will be taken to the MUA's national conference in February. The union's head, Paddy Crumlin, joins us now. Paddy, good afternoon to you. What's behind this proposed merger? I think it's a natural thing. The world's changing. You know, unions have additional responsibilities, both in engaging with employers, you know, for a more productive economy and a more productive workplace. Uh, it's a more threatening place for workers. There's a lot of anti-union laws. You see penalty rates disappearing, you know, and a systematic deregulation of the, you know, it's harder to get into the workplace if you're a union officer. And there is a whole ideology against unions and workers, I guess, manifested in things like the Royal Commission. So, you know, well, we have to service our members. And to do that, uh, you have to be well-resourced, objective, and you've got to give them the services they require. So size is substantial. Size being substantial? Your membership has been declining. Union membership has been declining now for, for, for years. How much is this being driven by the fact that you are dealing with dwindling numbers? Oh, well, we're not. Uh, when I came in as National Secretary, we had 8,000 maritime workers. We've now got 15,000. So we're in an area where we have good density. Uh, we have a very loyal membership. They pay high union dues. And we like to think we give them good service. We're good at what we do. And, uh, but this is about many of the demands, the legal demands. I mean, the whole business is now a minefields of litigation, a lot of it vexatious litigation, federal court. We're going to the high court just to work in our own country because the federal government has refused to employ Australians and want to import people on a migration visa. So there's a whole plethora of challenges for working men and women in this country, not only in the maritime industry, but in the construction industry, in the mining industry, in the forestry industry, in the manufacturing industry. So yes, we can keep our identity, we believe, and this is the, what we'll be taking back to the members. We can build a stronger union with better resources, better financial resources, better legal resources, better intervention and counselling resources, all of the things that the community isn't providing fully for working workers, and we can do it through economies of scale that don't see us losing our identity. In terms of that identity, the CFMEU has around 90,000 members. As you mentioned, Paddy, there's around 15,000 in the MUA. How would that balance work with so the, the majority of voices from the CFMEU? Well, we would have our own section. You can't be MUA here to stay and then disappear on everybody. So we'd be the MUA here to stay division, if you like, and we would retain our rules. See, this is a democracy of unions. Workers have defined the people they want to lead, including me. The workers, maritime workers, have defined the type of union they want to live in, and they pay high union dues to achieve that. So we will have a division that will keep the identity, will keep all the strengths, but in those areas where we need additional resources, as I say, legal, you know, we're already in a joint venture with the mining division in a credit union, the Mining and Maritime Credit Union. There are things that we can do in financial services better. There are things that we can do in superannuation better. As I said, early intervention, the depression. We're in shift workers and carry shift workers. We have Hunter Link because there's a big gap in community support. Now, if we're able to work together with like-minded people, to service those working men and women, there are economies of scale that will increase the services without losing this special identity that we've had for the last 143 years when uh, the first maritime unions were formed in this country. Paddy Crumlin, in the statement you released a little earlier, you said we've been presented with a monumental opportunity to represent working men and women in the Australian workplace without losing the long and proud history of our nation, of our union. How much is that? on your mind that if the long and proud history may have been, in your words, may have been lost, in other words, there may have been no future for this union if it didn't merge? Well, if a lot of employers get their way and if some of the people in the federal government get their way, there won't be unions. You know, there is a war on workers going in certain ideological trenches. And so you can have big companies that don't pay tax. Look at Brookfields, for example. They're buying Asiano. They own Multiplex. They're OK to be able to use a cash box to go into any industry, manufacturing, maritime, mining, anything they want. 
And they don't necessarily, and I'm not having a go at Brookfield, but they don't necessarily have a regard for their workers or their trade unions. And it's incumbent upon trade unions to have economies of scale too, so that they can get into a conversation with these big corporations and ensure that their employees and the workers that we represent have proper representation. This is just modern unionism. It's happening all over the place, and it's about time that happened in Australia. It's been a long time since a round of mergers, and now we're merging again because both the economy demands it, the interests of our members demand it, but they're only going to do it if it increases the services and the quality of their life, and they will decide whether or not this new structure will. That's the important and underlying line here. Okay, and UA uh, National Secretary Paddy Cromlin joining us live in the studio. Thanks so much for dropping in. Thank you, guys.